This is Brendan Kuzak. What I have for you today is a short video explaining how to deal with operations with rational expressions in your math course or on the SAT, ACT, or other standardized tests. So what we really need to know about operations with rational expressions is it's really just a combination of two topics that you should already be familiar with. These two topics are factoring and then topics involving fractions. So the topics involving fractions include adding and subtracting fractions, finding the least common denominator when dealing with fractions, or how to properly multiply fractions. So if you know those three topics, go ahead, watch this video. If not, I recommend maybe reviewing some of those topics and then coming back to this. So let's see how those topics are apply. Most questions in this area are simply gonna ask you to simplify what these values are, these uh, expressions that have been given to you. For this one right here, you always want to remember to factor first when dealing with rational expressions. So I know how to factor this. I need two numbers that add to 32, or multiply to 32, excuse me, but then add to negative 12. And I know that negative 8 and negative 4 would satisfy that. So I know that this numerator can factor into x minus 8 times x minus 4. For the denominator, I need two numbers that multiply to negative 32, but only add to negative 4. For that reason, I know that x minus 8 and x plus 4 work really well. Now, once you have the same factor in both the numerator and the denominator, and these factors are only being multiplied by each other, you can simply cross off the x minus 8s. And we would find that our final answer for this one would just be x minus 4 divided by x plus 4. Pretty easy, right? Let's try to see if we can make it a little bit harder. For this next one, we're going to be dealing with multiplication between two different rational expressions. While it might seem complicated, fortunately it's actually really easy. All we have to do is start by factoring. So I'm going to start by factoring this first term. Two numbers that multiply to 12 but add to 7 would be x plus 4 and x plus 3. And on the bottom part here, two numbers that multiply to 8 but add to negative 6 would be x minus 4 and x minus 2. On the right part of this equation over here, I'm just going to factor again. I need two numbers that multiply to negative 8 but add to 2, so I'm going to have x plus 4 times x minus 2. And for the bottom right part here, two numbers that multiply to negative 21, but add to negative 4. For that, we're going to have x minus 7 times x plus 3. Now, fortunately, if you remember anything about multiplying fractions, all you have to do when you multiply fractions is you multiply straight across the top, and you multiply straight across the bottom. Simple. So what we can do with operations of rational expressions is we can actually simplify numbers that are right above or right below each other, or we can go across to these two separate fractions and simplify. And this is called cross simplification. So let's say I wanted to start cross simplifying here. I could cross off this x plus 3 with this x plus 3. I could cross off this x minus 2 with this x minus 2. But then I can't really cross off anything else. There are no other factors that match perfectly in the numerator and the denominator. So we would just end up with our final answer of x plus 4 times x plus 4, which can be written as x plus 4 squared over x minus 4 times x minus 7. Now, if you're taking a standardized test or a multiple choice test and you don't see this answer present, no need to worry. All you need to do is foil out these numbers. Sometimes the answer might be provided as x plus 4 squared in the denominator, or you might actually have to foil that out. If you're not familiar with foiling, please review that to remember what that means. Now, looking at the final question that we have here, and I would say this is definitely the most challenging topic with operations with rational expressions, because it involves adding and subtracting fractions, which is a little bit more difficult than just multiplying or dividing. So let's say we wanted to solve this. Again, we're going to start the same exact way we did last time, and we're going to factor. So let's say we factor this equation on the left can't really do anything with 3x squared, but I can factor this down here into x minus 8 
times x plus 4. Can't really factor the top here. I'm um, not too worried about that. But I can factor the bottom into x minus 8 times x plus 6. All right, so now we got two fractions. We got everything factored. What can we do next? Well, to answer that question, I'm going to review a fraction really quick and how you add them. And let's say I wanted to add two fractions where I wanted to add something like 3 over 4 plus 7 over 6. Let's just go with that. What do I have to do to add these fractions? What I have to do is make sure I find the same common, uh, the least common denominator. And the least common denominator is equal to the least common multiple of the two denominators. So if I think of multiples of 4, those are things like 4, 8, and 12. Multiples of 6, 6, 12, 18, yada, yada. I don't have to go any further because I can see that 12. They both have 12 in common. So in order to get this fraction, have a denominator of 12, I multiply this by 3 over 3. And in order to get this fraction to have a denominator of 12, I multiply this by 2 over 2. So then we find that this is 9 over 12, and we find that this is 14 over 12. Now, we haven't changed the value of either of these fractions. We have simply changed their form, so there's nothing, we're not breaking any fundamental math rules by doing this. And when adding fractions, once they have the same denominator, you just add straight across the top, but you keep the bottom the same. So the top is going to become 9 plus 14, which is 23, and the denominator is simply going to be 12. Now back to rational expressions, where it seems a little bit more complicated. In order to get these two expressions here to have the same denominator, let's think about what they have in common. This has an x minus 8 and this has an x minus 8. So that's good. We want that. But this one has an x plus 4, where this one doesn't. And this one has an x plus 6, where this one doesn't. So what we need to do is we need to multiply the two sides, uh, both the top and the bottom of each of these fractions, by what's missing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply this one by x plus 4 divided by x plus 4, just as I multiplied my regular fraction by 2 over 2. I'm going to multiply this one by x plus 6 over x plus 6. And then now we have the same denominator in both of these fractions. Now, to continue going through this is going to get a little bit messy, but please bear with me. I am not going to foil out the denominators. I'm going to let them stay the same. But I do have to foil out the numerators so that I can properly subtract and then simplify. For this top equation here, I would just be distributing the 3x squared to the x into the 6. So this is going to become 3x cubed plus 18x squared over everything that's here. I'm just going to write it as d for now for denominator, just because I don't want to keep rewriting it. We'll put it all together at the end. For this one right here, this is going to be kind of a pain because it's a trinomial times a binomial. So we have to distribute the x to each term, and then distribute the 1 to each term, and then simplify it. When I do that, I'm going to end up with 4x cubed minus 7x squared plus x. And I'm also going to end up with 16x squared minus 28x plus 4. And I can simplify this by bringing the terms together. So 4x cubed is its own term. Can't do anything to simplify that. But negative 7x squared and 16x squared could become plus 9x squared. Negative 28x and positive x could become minus 27x. And the 4 could just be 4. So this whole thing is going to become 4x cubed plus 9x squared minus 27x plus 4 over the denominator. Whew, kind of a long problem. Fortunately, they don't ask too many of these on the SAT, and when they are, they're one of the hardest problems. So you're not going to see a ton of this. Don't worry about that. But you do want to know how to do it. Now, once we do this, we have to subtract one fraction from the other. And remember that there, I always call these implied parentheses, the parentheses that exist in any numerator or denominator of a fraction. 
and you need to distribute across it. So when we combine this numerator, I need to do 3x squared minus 4x, or 3x cubed minus 4x cubed, which would give me negative x cubed. I need to do 18x squared minus 9x squared, which would give me plus 9x squared. And then I don't have other terms, so it's just negative negative 27x, which is plus 27x, negative plus 4, which is minus 4, and then over this whole denominator of x plus 6 times x minus 8 times x plus 4. And that's the proper math way to do it. I would say it's really important to know this way, especially if you want to major in anything that's STEM related, you're going to deal with a lot of polynomials. But for the SAT and ACT, it's also important. I will go over a little trick in the next video. This is something to just help you kind of the quick and dirty way to solve it that works for the SAT. I do warn you, it only works for some problems, mainly multiple choice ones. It's not something that's going to help you with a grid in necessarily, but I'll provide you with that to help you. So thank you so much for watching. Appreciate it.